Hello everybody, it's Eric once more. We're going to be working on the neck of our cherry fiddle today, and I have already drawn out the side profile of this neck, and I'm going to be drilling out the peg holes first while the block is still square and there's no other deviations to it. I'm really excited for this neck. The wood is slightly different than the wood on the back. It's still cherry, but it's from a different uh, batch. We got it from a sawmill a long time ago, and then the cherry on the back of the violin my dad got from some guy on Craigslist. So slightly different, still mostly the same shade though. It's a little lighter though. And I'll take it over to the bandsaw and do a little bit of cutting. I'll refine that shape of course with some rasps and files and sandpaper. I don't have to worry too much about the underside uh, where your hand rides along because that's not finished for right now. I have this fisheye template printed out in a piece of plastic have it lined up with the center line I have scored, and I'll mark around it and cut up to the bulbous part of the scroll. Now to get rid of the rest of that material, I'll have to make some tangential cuts, and it makes this star pattern, and I end those cuts just at where that fish eye template, or fishtail template, left those marks. And where those marks end, I will stop cutting, I'll chisel it out, and I'll make a new mark going up and then I'll make my tangent cuts in the exact same manner as before, on both sides, of course. And some more chiseling later, we've got a pretty flat looking scroll. Now to give it the depth that a normal scroll has, we're gonna do some undercutting. And it's just a matter of me taking my gouge and scooping out a little bit of material. It's fairly subtle, but hopefully you can see here, it makes a big difference in the final appearance and I think it looks very nice. To note, this scroll isn't perfectly symmetric, but hey, for my first time, I think it's pretty damn close. And the only other changes I'll make after that is this fluting. I'll leave the center line untouched, and to either side, I'll use my quarter-inch gouge to take out material, being careful and cognizant of the grain direction, making sure I'm always moving downhill to not chip anything out. At this point, I'm gonna drill out the peg box. This is where the strings will go. Now, I'm using a normal like high-speed drill bit as opposed to a brad point so that there's not uh, extra depth at the bottom of the brad point. However, this caused the drill bit to wander and I couldn't really finish up entirely with that, especially on the sloped surface of the scroll. I'm not quite sure how most people normally do it. So I stopped once I was having too many problems and I just to my quarter inch gouge and start very slowly taking out material. And once I did that, I took my chisel and tried to square up those sides. So it's pretty rough to start out with, but uh, I'll get those sides squared and then once they're squared, I'll slowly work them back to their lines. I'm not going to take it back immediately. I'm going to get it square first so I know how I'm working. You can see some of the burning on the side from where those drill bits were and I was a little bit too far to the left. It's not visible on the final uh, piece, but as I'm working, it certainly is noticeable. And with that done, we can start working on the fingerboard. So this is a piece of ebony I got from Stumac. You can see it's pretty chunky at this stage, and so I'm going to have to take it down on every single face pretty much, except the ends. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring down the width, and I'll do that by holding it square against the sanding board here, and I will draw it towards me. It creates a lot of dust, so I'm constantly vacuuming that up to keep my sandpaper nice and unclogged. And I'll be measuring and making sure that I'm square as I'm going. I don't want to bring that out of square, I just want to shrink it down, because it's about a millimeter or so out of line when I start off. So again, nice careful strokes drawn towards me <laughs> more and more vacuuming a lot of dust created with this and again more draw filing oh it's not draw filing you could do draw filing on this but uh, draw sanding being very careful i'm not i could go back and forth on this but 
I don't want to move that out of square. And I'll check the angles to make sure they're all right. I didn't want to mess with the angles. It was the right ratio between the end and the front, but it was uh, not the, it was too wide. And so once I'm happy with that, I can begin taking off the bottom of it, shrinking the depth of that fingerboard because it's just too tall now. And there's actually a lot of material to take off. Once I do that, I'll rescribe a center line and I will mark out how much I want to take and scallop out. You see how thick the end of that is? Well, we're gonna change that here in a moment. So you hopefully you can see my marks there and I'm just going to start by gouging some of this out. I started out with this half inch gouge, didn't work too well. But I'll switch over to my finger planes here in a moment, and I think we'll see how much progress I was able to make with that. Yeah, this is what we like. A lot of material was removed with this, and it really lightens up the fingerboard, and that's what gives this a much more professional feel and look. And once I do that, I did use some scrapers as well, but I'll check the radius of this fingerboard and make sure it's correct. There's a lot of debate on how you can go about making this radius, whether or not it's constant, so kind of like a cross-section of a cylinder, or it's changing, kind of like a cross-section of a cone, and then also what, how it's curved. There's actually kind of an underbow to that. Or, I'm sorry, not, it's an underbow or an overbow? It's con... Yeah, you know what, I'm not even going to attempt to say it because I'll mess myself up. <laughs> but hopefully you can see it's a lot thinner now and it looks absolutely gorgeous. I was very happy with how this came out. And the, well, I guess we'll cut this down to size. Now I did temporarily glue on the fingerboard, mark the sides, and then that's the line I'm cutting to here. Once that's done, I'll smooth it out with my, well, it looks like a file, but I have a piece of sandpaper glued to the other side. That's the first very basic curve cut. Now I have to cut the start of that dovetail joint. So it's this trapezoidal shape, but it also pushes uh, outwards slightly so that it will dovetail into the slot. So I'm being very careful and cognizant of that as I am cutting this down with a saw. Not the best saw. I need to get a better joiner saw, but that's what I have. There's a little flat part at the top that's to be a part of the design. Small and I have a little template here that I'm using to mark out the true final shape of the neck. You hopefully notice that it was a lot chunkier than it should have been before. Now some templates have you cut that out from the start. The template I was using was not like that one. And there it is, all cut out. Now we're gonna to have to actually shape that neck and round it over. I'll start off with a knife and after the knife, I'll switch over to vials and wraps, and rasps and some sandpaper. But of course, whittling this away is gonna be a lot quicker. And that curve at the button usually is perfectly uh, kind of like a half circle. But what I did is a little bit more of an arch than a circle. That was by design. But hopefully you can see it's fairly smooth in this state. I'm not gonna finish it perfectly. Also, while I was doing that, I ended up nicking out a bit of the scroll. So I'm taking a bit of very super thin CA glue and dropping it in there just to make sure that whole area is saturated and that seam is glued in. No other way you're gonna glue that with wood glue or something. Now this is an earlier version of the scroll, but just to show the same idea, this is how I glued it on just temporarily with two daubs of hide glue. Now I have center lines to make sure it's all lined up. And then once that's on temporarily, again, I had to do it a second time, I sanded it nice and smooth. This will be the second to last time it's connected. The final time will be after I take it off once more for varnishing and then put it on once that is all complete. You could do it with the fingerboard on, but the varnishing then becomes a game of, well, you have to get under the fingerboard. And of course, I'll sand this down so it's nice and smooth to the touch. And there it is, looking pretty snazzy, if you ask me. So I'm very happy with this. And in the next episode, we'll get it connected to the rest of the body of the violin, which we'll also assemble there. You can see a little bit of that button shape. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. 
and I'll see you in the next one if you're so inclined to join me. All right, love you all. Bye-bye for now.